Welcome back to SOS. I'm Stas Arm Badass. <laughs> it's Sunday. Cheer up. Put a smile on your face. Alright. I'm going to talk about these masks. I did it in a podcast last night, but I want to show you something I think is really cool. And if you've got kids and you want them to have a gas mask, here you go. I think I could listen to that radio station all day. Without any word of warning. Alright. This is an Israeli child's gas mask. Look how tiny it is. Yes, it is a child's gas mask. It's a size 1, I'm assuming. If you get Russian gas masks, they are listed as a size 1. They do fit my kids. They do come with brand new filters. And there's always the question. I get asked a lot of questions. It's right after I did the podcast last night, I got an email and I figured I'd answer it. But the question. And it's, you know, how does the drinking system work? Okay, that was one of them. How can I make a drinking system for a gas mask? And that's pretty easy if you get one of these. Because it actually comes with that. Now, the other question was the filters. How long do the filters last? And I will answer the question. Because this is always something that people don't really consider. They are, they are organic. They are active charcoal. They will expire. They will die. It's organic. It's going to die. And I've, I've covered videos on this stuff before. This is my specialty. This is what I know the most of. And these things, if you keep resealing them, they will continue to last. And that's always something that it kind of go. It kind of goes with uh, so many other things. But just take it for what it is, okay? If if it's sealed and you just leave it alone. As long as it's functioning and oxygen is getting to you, then you're going to be okay. But I'm going to tell you, in a chemical environment, they might last 30 minutes. They might last 20 minutes. That's with chemicals, and that's some hardcore stuff. And, and when it comes to gases, right, if you detect an odor while you're breathing through your gas mask, that's the other thing. And it's going to be like a sweet taste or something like that. You'll start to taste it and smell it. You know, it'll be a sweet taste. But if you ever detect that, you have to get away from whatever it is immediately and fix your stuff because something's wrong. I, I could tell you that right now. But they'll last until they stop working, until oxygen stops going through them eventually. But they'll catch dust for ever. I mean, you could wear one of these things for a hundred days or something as long as it's it's still breathable, it's still working, it's still catching dust. So if you were, say, because uh, it's not going to stop, you know, certain, you know, radiation, it's not going to stop radiation, but it can still stop the uh, particulates in the air, and it can keep doing that for a very long time. So say you were in a nuclear fallout environment, you could keep wearing this until it just clogs up and stops working. That's my answer to that question. I think they actually determined it was like 180 days that you could go in a nuclear environment with this just, you know, catching the debris and keeping it from getting in your lungs. There you go. But now a chemical environment, it won't last so long. It's going to uh it it's going to it's going to uh break down. It's going to start to break down everything inside of it within 20 to 30 minutes. Just keep that in mind. I mean, there's a major difference in nasty, nasty, and then moderately, you know, dust and particulates and stuff like that. But for a particulate filter, this goes beyond a particulate filter. The reason why the, you know, a particulate, it catches particulates regardless, okay? It does not matter. Now, an N95, someone will ask me about those little masks that you buy at like Coleman's or some, or, or um, freaking Lowe's or Home Depot. Those in those N95 masks, I have to talk about this because it gets brought up and it gets misconstrued a lot. Those N95 filters will they will catch particulates up to and it's called an N95 for a reason. It's 95. 
versus like the hundreds, the P100s and stuff. The P100s is a lot higher than than an N95. This goes beyond the P100. Okay, so <laughs> there's a big difference in filters here, but uh, this filter here is going to go way beyond that, and it's just like the other filters that I have that I keep. I keep these double sealed because these are U.S. military, and these are the M44s that I've talked about before. You can buy these online all day long. You just type in uh, on eBay, go look up M M44, and you'll find a stockpile of these things for sale. So they're they're going to be fine as long as you leave them sealed like this. It's kind of like canned food, okay? People will say, you know. Um, <laughs> It's just like if you if a company can prove that canned food can last beyond five years, they don't even have to put a date on it. They just put like the barn date on it. You know what I mean? The day it was born or something like that. But that's all they got. They have to do. They don't really have to put a date on it because it's it, it's been proven like even with the, it's organic. OK, so I'm trying to compare the two together here. It's just like uh, food has been found inside ships that were buried underground and they dug them up and brought the food up and did the uh, bio testing and all the other trash and freaking cooked it and ate it and it was still delicious and fantastic. It lost some of its nutritional value and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so <laughs> it, we learn something new every day, right? So um, it just goes with food it, and a lot of people don't do a lot of research into food, but same thing goes with this filter here. It was category at, uh, as a five-year filter. It goes beyond five years. So it has a beyond five-year shelf life. If I don't ever open this thing, it's going to go beyond that. I can open this thing 10 years from now, and it's still going to be a functional filter. Just keep that stuff in mind because people throw stuff away way too soon. And as long as it's still sealed, no one's monkeying around with it, then you're going to be all right. That's I just wanted to cover that real quick because it's part of the question. But an N95 is not something that you would want to wear to catch, um, you know, from from alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. You would not want to use an N95. I'm just throwing it out. I would want something a little bit more than that. But you could. I'm not saying you can't. I'm just saying I wouldn't. And that's, I, I always get, uh, it's, it's always been one of those, so what are you saying, you know? So what am I saying? I'm saying I would just stick with the best option possible and then get those same best options for your children. And you can get the Israeli. This is, see, this one says number three on it. I don't know if it's listed as number three or not. I just looked up children's NATO gas mask and came up with multiple different uh, versions of it. And this one was around 20 bucks. So... It's brand new. You can tell it's it's completely brand new. It's untouched. It functions. It's already passed a fitness test on my kids. My kids have already put it on, and I've already done the fitness test. The fitness test, basically, you put it on their face, and they can't have a beard, obviously, right? We can't have a beard. So you just fit it to their face, and then hold your hand here, and then have them blow in. This thing's going to do this number here and buckle. Then it's going to hold. Then you let go, and it goes... Phew, It'll pop back out. Put your hand over this part here. Basically, you want to take this part. I would personally, I would take this part here off and then right there, cover that up and then cover that up and have them blow. And when they blow, it's going to make a farting sound. It's going to fart around here. It's going to, the air is going to come out around here. But anyways, storing them, just take good care of them and stuff like that. But I thought I would show you, this is the child one. And uh, for most gas masks, you'll have this drinking straw. Okay. Th this is a good example, but there are so many other ones that have the same drinking system. So you got your, you bite down on this and you see that there. But yeah, you bite down on that and you take a drink. And then right over here, you just take this little guy off and you connect your hose up. But it comes with this. Okay. And this connects here, so you leave that connected while you're trucking. So you need something to drink. You don't want to go disconnecting this and then reconnecting that and all this other stuff. Just go ahead and have it connected uh, before you go into a dangerous environment. That way you could go ahead and take a drink. Now it's neat how this works. I'm just going to get this out of the way. But here's some parts you're going to remove from a canteen. Because you're going to have to convert it to work with an Israeli gas mask 
if you want, I would I would do some research to see if you can't just get an Israeli canteen as well. But they have the drinking system, so I'm sure you can get the same drinking container. But this is the U.S. version. You've got this part here. Inside the cap, there's also an eye drop. See that? How it spurted water there? Anyway, but you uh, you can use this to gather water, and you just leave this sealed for it. This, as long as you've got this cap, it'll stay sealed once you remove these two parts. I remove these parts because you need a special adapter that actually pushes this tiny little pin down to open it up so the water comes out. Blech. Don't care. I don't need all that, but you open this guy right here, bring that around, and there's your attachment. Take your hose, then insert it into here. Now once that's inserted, you're good to go. Now you just put it back on here. There's water inside. Hear that? Take this guy here. Screw her on right there. Now at this point, if you want water, you're going to basically take it out of your pouch and you're going to hold it like this. It's just going to work better. Now notice there's no water coming out. See, I've got it like this. There's no water coming out. Because, we'll bring this around here. I don't want to make a big mess. Don't make me make a big mess. All right, you have to press these two doodads together. You press them together like this. There we go. And there's your water flow. And that's how that works. For those of you that wanted to know things like that. I figured I would cover it today. Answer a few questions because I had questions about this stuff. And um, I figured I'd answer the question about the drinking straw. And you just leave that in there. There's nothing going to get in it. You're going to be fine. It, you can just leave this here connected. And if you've got like a two canteen system, just, you know, just leave this connected like this if you want. Or, you know, just take it off because it doesn't have to be on here. Make sure my water's out of that. Drain all your water. There we go. All right. And then when you put this cap back on, it's going to seal anyway. So it's not going anywhere. It's still sealed and it's still tight. So you don't have to worry about this doodad here. If it's in there, just take it out if you don't have the conversion for it. But I figured I'd give you that little tip there just in case you need it. And uh, that's how all that works. But like I said, when it comes to like nuclear fallout type stuff, it's going to be a lot different than dealing with chemicals you know your biological type stuff your those those mad nerve agents right you know like agent orange and weird stuff so all those things like that is going to be a major you better get the heck out of there as fast as you can it, just because you've got a gas mask doesn't mean you're going to be safe in that environment it's always good to remind people about that i mean uh nuke it is what it is man you're gonna be walking through that stuff for a while anyway You'll be all right as long as you've got something a little bit stronger than an N95. That's about it. That's all I got for you. You're watching us, Wes. Sass on about us. Have a beautiful, fabulous, fantastic rainbow unicorn pony day. And take it easy. Love you guys.